Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Face It Challenger Invitational number two. And this is going to be it, stress, the it grand be. finals between SK Gaming Prime and, of course, Gamers 2. I cannot wait for this. This should be a fantastic final and is not the first time these two have met each other. We'll get into that as we get into the game, but we're into the picks and bans phase already and two jungle bans coming out so far. So already putting pressure on uh, Ku and Morden. Yes, indeed. Yasuo also has been banned out, which we've seen pretty much 90% of the time, I'd say. Yeah, a surprising amount that he hasn't been banned. Mm -hmm. uh, the same actually with Kassadin, although Kassadin this time is going to be banned. Uh, SK not going to be able to play that, as uh, Exile did play that in the previous game, but very standard bans so far. Yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. And as you say, he's actually banned out from SK. So obviously thinking, you know, we don't want Ocelot on Kassadin in yeah. the mid lane because he will tear us to pieces. Pantheon's also been banned out against Ku. We saw that banned out in the Gamers 2 series earlier. Mm -hmm. they, they banned out Pantheon in the first game, uh, and I believe played it in the second, and ended up doing pretty well with it. Yeah. So I, I guess it's just a case of they want to make sure that they have the option to first pick whichever they want and don't want Pantheon getting through. LeBlanc is going to round out the bans. We saw Ocelot first pick LeBlanc in game number two of their mm. series. And yet didn't die, if you remember. Yeah. He was 8-0 and zero after a, a fairly sketchy Zed game, I believe it was, in game number one. So that's going to leave Lee Sin open, yeah. uh, picking it against Q. Yeah, I think that's a very smart choice there. Yes. Morden has played Lee Sin enough times and is good enough on Lee Sin that it's a fantastic pickup for them now that Elise is gone and uh, you know there's a couple of odd junglers left you've got Wukong available you've, you've got a couple of other options as well but taking that away from Ku is a big part especially considering that they already banned Vi and Ku's only played Vi and Lee Sin yes yeah. so that's significantly lowering his champion pool I'm sure he's got plenty more up his sleeve but those are his two go-to champions yeah and uh, as I was saying like I think it's Wukong is the last really strong jungler right now yeah. unless there's something that I'm completely completely missing. I was about to say, wouldn't be surprised to see the support pick up here as uh, Annie and Leona were available. Uh, I'm kind of expecting to see a Leona pick up here, although Thresh is still available as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting situation on the supports here. No support bands for once. And Daihud plays a, a really, really strong Thresh. Yeah. So it would not surprise me to see the Thresh getting locked in. Of course, Leona has also been a, a go-to support champion, isn't banned. And of course, Annie on the opposite side with Sivir. Leona's pretty good against Sivir. So... Thresh, Leona, both interchangeable. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of the, the way that uh, bot lane is picked around who has Leona mm -hmm. as well with Jinx. So Jinx is an option uh, that is still available for them now, uh, as is Lucian. Wouldn't be surprised to see either of those picked up as the AD carry. Uh, we've still got a lot of options still available, and uh, it now is kind of the game of... When do they pick JWoww's champion? Do they pick it now and pick something standard, or do they wait and see whether they can pick a damage champion? Uh, kind of expecting the Leona Lucian here. They are going to lock that in. There we go. Kind of standard. Leona's just very good against uh, Sivir, and we actually saw it in the previous game where Dayud was landing. It was two or three consecutive solar flares on Sivir. I really Velkos. want that to get locked in. We haven't seen a competitive Velkos, and it would kind of throw us for a loop in the fact that We've not casted Valkos before, and we haven't had time to play him too much from yeah. traveling. But I would love to see, in our grand finals, somebody play something a little bit different. Valkos was released. We had about a day, and then we flew here. Yeah. So neither of us have played... I've played Valkos in like a custom game, and, and that's as far as I've gone. I got a couple of games in. Right. I, okay. I got a little bit scared by the Battlecast Valkos skin because I was oh. like, ah, it's a Sentinel. Matrix, yeah. Yeah, definitely. exactly. So I really want to see that locked in. I don't expect it to be blind. They're going to move off it. Uh, I, I kind of feel like picking uh, a new champion blindly into anything yeah. is difficult. Gragas is still available. Uh, Orianna is still available. So there are better options to me. Lulu. It's not going to get locked in. L Lulu is still, open. is still available. Yeah. Okay. That was the one champion that hasn't been banned yeah. out here. Renekton, very, very solid. We've seen it enough times this weekend. We know what it's like. Wukong's the jungler that we were expecting as well. And we actually saw Ocelot playing Lulu in the first day. Yes, the we tournament did. As well. So it wouldn't be completely out of question to see Ocelot lock that character in again. Well, there we go. Oh, you, have you been borrowing Jat's crystal ball? I haven't. I wish I had, though. That would, uh, that would explain a lot. Now, Shivana's probably going to be the pick of choice for JWoww here. Um, or he has played Trundle as well. We've seen him play Jax. Jax against Renekton. Uh, Jax loses early game, but he, as Jax always does, yeah. scales well into the late game. And Jax, we saw JWoww earlier, absolutely 
decimate the late game yeah. in that game against um, it was. Uh, Jacks decimated against uh, TFS the the TNP. Yeah, TNP. They changed the name. That's why I couldn't remember it. TNP. Uh, so. Yeah. Trundle is another pickup that. Yep, yeah, we've seen JWoww play Trundle. Yeah. Gonna lock that in. We saw him on the first day and play uh, Trundle, and we did. I even remember you saying very distinctly that Tr Trundle is that nice mix between aggressive top laner and tanky top laner. Yeah. And it fits JWoww's um, kind of mentality so so well. Because it allows him to go in first and play super aggressive, but still retain tanky uh, stats because of subjugate. Yeah, for sure. That it, it's just one of those champions that JWoww can output a lot of damage on and is pretty good. Gragas got locked in for the mid lane. Uh, a very consistent champion. Looks like we've had a, a little bugs. This weekend we've had a couple of different little runes and masteries bugs as we've headed into the first lobby of, uh, of a game. But we are, uh, we'll, we'll get that fixed and, and get things back underway very, very shortly. But this should be one heck of a series. Oh, it should be. I think, other than ninjas in pajamas, who unfortunately were DC'd, uh, DC'd, nice. Well, I guess it could have been. They're DQ'd, is the, mm. the acronym I was looking for there. Um, these are the two teams I think most people were expecting to see in the final two. Yeah. Uh, I think also uh, another alongside NIP, Cloud9 Eclipse would mm -hmm. have been yeah. uh, another expected one. And N Faculty taking out Cloud9 Eclipse to pretty much begin their tournament. And again, that's another story. Cloud9 Eclipse in the face of Challenger Invitationals are 0-4 uh, and four in the first rounds. That's that. Wow. When you put That's it like that, it's stat. pretty brutal, actually. And then you see them win Coke Challenger League. Yeah. Although, to be fair to them, they did have substitutes this time around. Yeah, and the Two funny thing is, Ku is playing in SK Gaming Prime in this game. It is a substitute from what, what, from what we're aware. Yes, he is substituting in for Perry, who is the, uh, used to be called Bro Bro. Uh, for Lowland Line and such. That's where I know Perry from. Yeah, he I, used to be I Bro knew Bro. I knew him from somewhere. The more you know. The more we know, it's... Yeah, he's a yeah, very, very good jungler, but Ku has filled those shoes extremely well. Oh, yeah. We saw it in the previous series there against uh, in faculty that really just Ku, you don't let him get Lee Sin, and he does the same on Vi. So uh, Ku's really strong. And uh, Wukong, again, is a very early game jungler. Puts out a lot of damage. Has a, a significant amount of crowd control in the mid-game team fights as well. Mm -hmm. That's something to look forward to. Is uh, they've got the Wukong Cyclone. They've got the Gragas Explosive Cask. So there's a lot of disruption in those mid-game team fights. That if SK Prime can work off the back of that, they may actually do pretty well in those fights. I mean, I'm looking. The the team fight synergy just isn't there as much for gamers too. Yeah, that's true. And also, I, I, I've always liked um, Wukong as a counter to Leona. And just bear with me here. Solar Flare goes down. If it doesn't land on Wukong, he instantly jumps in and cyclones everyone. Okay. That Solar Flare times out, and it's basically for nothing. And also, if you've got Gragas on your team, if a Solar Flare comes in, knock them all back with Explosive Cask. Reset yeah. the fight. And apart from Leona, the only other person that can really go all in is Trundle, and potentially Lee Sin, depending on how they actually want to play this one out. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to these team fights, indeed. There's also a disruption when you look at uh, Arcelot's Lulu, who uh, has that knock-up. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, well, I guess thankfully for certain teams, Yasuo wasn't available in this. So we're not looking for that knock-up synergy quite as much as you would with the Yasuo yeah. combination. So uh, all of these champions are very strong in their own right, though. Lulu doesn't exactly have many bad matchups for uh, no. for her laning phase. So pretty pretty consistent, as is Gragas in lane. I think that's one of the reasons why Lulu's seeing so much play, is because mm. you, it's very difficult to counter that champion. It's just strong all yeah. around, consistently strong. And especially in the experienced hands of a veteran like Ocelot, he's going to be able to make big things happen with that character. Yeah, and I mean, talking of the experience of Ocelot, we'll go back to people that maybe didn't see uh, Gamers 2's first series of today, where um, they would actually, Ocelot would go 0 and 6 on Zed at one point, which you may think sounds pretty bad, but he then identified his role in that team. They took the game to the late game, close to the 50-minute mark. And at that point, uh, he was just there to do damage and let JWoww and Yuki clean up. And from yep. there, that worked incredibly well. And he actually sent out a tweet saying, I played pretty badly, but the rest of my team played near perfect. And we ended up winning that game. In the next game, he sh completely sh uh, sh shoved that off. I, I thought you were going to say something else, to No, be he completely got rid of that uh, That. Zero and six performance and ended up going yeah. eight and zero. Yeah, exactly. With, with LeBlanc, which is why it was banned in this game, although now we're seeing uh, completely different bans because of the remake. But yeah. I think that's one of the reasons it was banned. Just yeah. respecting the champion, respecting Ocelot as well. But having a look at bot lane, Lucian, uh, Leona, Sivir, Annie, 
I would imagine it's going to be fairly stale at bot lane up until around level six, or if a jungler just kind of darts on it and tries to make some plays. We've seen these bot lanes quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's very back and forth. It depends on the stuns that land out of Annie, mm -hmm. the, the stuns that land out of, of Leona. It's kind of just a back and forth affair. There's a lot that trades between the two. And as you said, when, when junglers start appearing, that's really when you start getting that aggression. Uh, what we have seen, though, today is SK and Gamers 2 aren't afraid to lane swap is one of the other things. Yeah. Um, so whether they want to dodge the Trundle Renekton matchup, because of course uh, Trundle's pretty good uh, against Renekton, is it's not like the hard counter that uh, Trundle can be pretty much against Shivana, where you steal a load of those resistances yeah, and then yeah. just chunk through uh, Shivana. It's not quite that bad, mm -hmm. but you can avoid that matchup. Some teams do choose to avoid that matchup as well. So that, that's kind of something that we have to look at. And I also really like uh, something we didn't mention when Trundle was locked in that. JMO loves the aggressive uh, top laners. Yeah. But when you have Lee Sin in jungle, you can build him tanky, but he's never going to be like a massive tank. Yeah. Not the likes of, you know, uh, Renekton or whoever at the top lane, Mundo, someone like that. So the fact that you have a Lee Sin on your team, then you go Trundle and you mitigate that problem. Mm. Because now you do have kind of one semi tank and one full tank when you pop the ultimate and you, you're running down with Blade of the Rune King and, and such and what have you. So. Really like that. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things about this synergy. And one of the most interesting things about the weekend is our giveaways that we've been doing all weekend <laughs> long as well. So if you are signed up on the Face It platform, we gave you warning. Sorry if you're not. You've got to do it really, really quickly because we're going to give away some codes for premium. So if you're not quite there yet, hit the arrow on the top right-hand side of faceit.com, the website. Uh, make sure you head to the subscription settings page. That'll take you there. And we're going to give away... 10 premium codes here. You're the first 10 people to put the code into cha into the premium box will uh, receive premium. So we're going to get that up on screen for you now. So I got to face it. Whoever gets that into uh, the, the first 10 people, they're going to get premium on face it. And if you're not aware of what face it is, then you're probably too late to get the code. But <laughs> you can play some games against people of your own skill level and win some pretty awesome prizes. Even if you don't get the premium code, it's still worth doing. It's free to use. That's the important part. Yeah. Yes, you can get premium, which gives you more goodies, but ultimately it's free to use. Kind of like League of Legends. Yeah. If you want to get skins, you have to put money into it. If you want to get premium, you have to put money into it, but it's an awesome platform. League of Legends, CSGO, Quake, 1v1s, 3v3s, 5v5s. And as yep. you said, you play with people of equal skills. You're not going to be placed against someone in Diamond if you're Bronze or, uh, I don't know, Global Elite if you're Silver from CSGO. I don't know what that Global Elite versus Silver matchup would be, but I know I end up normally above you on the scoreboard is all. <laughs> so you can keep your Silver, Master. But nevertheless, we're on League of Legends here. So we've just opened on Nordic East as well, Nordic and East. Uh, so yeah. Europe West, Nordic and East, you can uh, get yourself signed up there. You can see we're heading into the game now after we've gone through the, uh, the remake of the lobby. So not long until this finals, just enough time to give a shout out to Overwolf. Thank you very much for sponsoring yep. the tournament and uh, allowing us to host this. I think it wouldn't have been possible to get myself and Vince here in Milan without all of the guys at Face It and Overwolf. So big thank you. Yeah, this has only been my second uh, kind of live on-site uh, cast that I've ever done, and I have to say it's, it's been an awesome experience. It has, and it's not over so, yet. Yeah, we still have the grand finale. Well, well pause. It, it's not going to be over for a little bit longer either because <laughs> we're into a pause. I'm glad we have that screen here so we don't have to you know, go into game and then uh, yeah, we have to yeah. come back to us. So you, you're kind of stuck with us for another minute or two, but uh, it's been fantastic so far. It has. It's been, it's been an absolute blast. And uh, just being in here Milan Fashion Week, as we said before, mm. was quite odd on the plane. Yeah, we got some new threads. I mean, can't you tell? <laughs> I lost my luggage, so yeah. I'm like using somebody who's a lot smaller than me shirt, and I can't <laughs> even button it up, which is why I have this T-shirt underneath. You can probably tell it's like tight around my shoulders and stuff. It's it's 2014 style, man. Yeah, wow. it's uh, how the cool kids roll. It's been a while since I've been a kid. You're old. I am. <laughs> that was old. mean, and I just oh, wow. I've got to sort that out. It wasn't. It was true. I know, but. You know. Is it mean if it's true? Can be. Mm. That's I guess harsh. This is what happens when we have to fill in dead time and we've already plugged like face it and talked about the champions and everything. The other thing you can do actually <laughs> is if you are just joining us, and this is actually something that's pretty cool, is all of the VODs from yesterday are already up 
on uh, the Face It YouTube. So uh, go to youtube.com forward slash Face It VODs. Mm -hmm. or VO yeah, VODs. And that will take you to all of the VODs from yesterday's games. And I'm pretty sure all of today's will be up uh, pretty soon. So if you did miss the semifinals and want to see them, you just keep an eye on the page. Subscribe to that YouTube. Follow this channel here on Twitch as well. And you can also go to Facebook and also Twitter. And yep. Twitter is at Face It. And the Facebook page is Face It Community. And I believe they have a, a secondary stream as well, which is Face It Community as well. Yeah, they're doing Quake, Quake, Quake at, at the, the moment. moment. Yeah. DDKs uh, yep. overcasting some Quake. So if Quake is your thing, open up multi Twitch. Because don't don't leave us. Like don't leave. It's please. the finals, you can't leave. Ocelot's playing. He I know, right? He, he's always got many, many fans looking after it, him. The chat right now, I can tell you, is uh, you only love Ocelot. Pretty much. Like, it's just all the way through. I, pretty pretty I, much. I, we can't see the chat from where we are, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's, it's just that again and again. Which, you know, some dedicated fans, apparently it's not. I'm disappointed. It will be when they hear this It will stuff, be, yeah. In about 30 seconds' in, time. Sorry to our chat admins that are going to have to <laughs> just deal with that Bad again and stress. again. Ah, oh, well, got to gotta make it difficult. But it's strange so, how, how a player or a team can attract so many viewers. For example, when we're casting Challenger Series and such, Meet Your Makers draw in a massive Polish following. Yeah. Just huge. Ex, uh, they're ex-Meet Your Makers now, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. Yeah. But previous Meet Your Makers would always draw in massive, massive viewership. Same with Ocelot. Same with uh, Dark Passage, who are a Turkish team. Yeah. Like the entire Turkish community would get behind them. It's just awesome to see. Yeah, it is. And especially in the challenger scene as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, luckily in recent times, we've had a lot more emphasis put on our challenger teams. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it, it really is growing a lot of teams. And you see the fan bases grow for teams. So even teams like uh, SK Prime, who uh, a couple of months back didn't even exist. So yeah. now are uh, uh, really, really well supported as well, uh, not only by the organization, but by the fans. So it, it's pretty awesome to see the growth. And you, c you guys can see behind us, we are in a pause. So yeah. uh, we will be getting into game fairly shortly. It looked like we did have a disconnect to begin the game. Uh, I think Ku actually disconnected in our previous series as well. He did, yeah. So uh, it's just one of those cases that we're just waiting to make sure everybody's here. Thankfully, this time, it's uh, not a, uh, an alarm clock problem. <laughs> At least we actually got into the, the uh, loading screen and onto the rift. Yeah. But it's interesting as well. Something we haven't mentioned is Ocelot's against his old orc here. Yeah. That is an interesting point. Maybe a bit of grudge? Well, I think there'd be a lot of desire to win this game. Yeah. I, I, I don't know whether there's a grudge as such, because I, I would imagine it, it was somewhat of a, a mutual decision. Mm. But yeah. you never know. Um, so I, I, he would like to win it, though, because he's just announced his new organization of Gamers 2. So, you know, that would be a pretty good stamp on uh, on that kind of uh, record. It would be pretty awesome as well to win the Face It Challenge Invitationals number two. Yeah. And to get your hands on that $1,000 for an online tournament is pretty huge. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a good exactly. weekend's work. Uh, hey, I wouldn't mind playing LOL for $1,000. I would if I had to face us a lot's team or SK Prime because I, I know I'd lose that. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless yeah. I was, unless it was the grand finals, and I knew I'd get like five hundred for losing. At which point, sign me up. But, but then you'd have had to have beat teams like Tick, Trick, and Duck, and then Faculty, and. But if I was drawn against NIP, you wouldn't even have to show up. Exactly, I could just log in and just stay in bed. <laughs> which coincidentally is what they could have done as well, but you never know. Oh dear. Too soon. I think it's all right. I think it has been twenty-four hours. I'm it's sorry. Probably also. asleep now. Anyway, they're not even watching this. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It wasn't even that well, late when we started. Bad mannered. Well, we are still w awaiting one of our players. Ku did end up having to drop out of the game again. It looks like he's just having a couple of connection problems today. Yeah, didn't stop them from winning the last series. True, though. and let's hope he does actually reconnect because last time he just didn't load in, and he was. Mm. I think he reconnected within thirty seconds. This time it's been over five minutes. So yeah. normally that's an indication it's something a bit deeper. Uh, maybe yeah, he's. It's okay. We, I think hopefully he should be back fairly soon and yeah. we can get into game fairly shortly. But uh, we are, of course, uh, on the live patch as well, on live mm -hmm. client. So a lot of things uh, get changed by those patch notes, which is why we're pretty pretty happy to be casting this as well. Yeah, and that's that's the reason why uh, Velcars is available mm. and why we were discussing the champion as well, because it has been released. Uh, and is a pretty interesting character to watch. We saw Yero playing it yesterday, albeit against viewers, but uh, he was putting out some serious, serious damage with that disintegration ray, the uh, the ultimate. I can't remember the full name of it. It's like life... Life form disintegration ray. 
Yeah, just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Mm. Hyperkinetic position reverser. That one's been out a while, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember at the time I thought, what the hell does that even mean? Because <laughs> kinetic is a, a form of energy, right? Yeah. Because you're the physicist. I'm not a physicist. but Engineer, yeah. but it's interlocked. It is. At, at this point in time, uh, I think perhaps to uh, stop the physics talk, I think maybe while we're trying to get Koo in the game, we'll get some confirmation of exactly where he is, which unfortunately means we have to go for a very short break as uh, we head into the game. But as soon as the game goes live, we will be back with you. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with game number one of our grand finals here for the Face It Challenger Invitational. Hello guys, welcome back. As you can see, the pause has been taken away and we are resuming the action here on Summoner's Rift. I'm so looking forward to this. I am James Stressolier. Alongside me, Vince Metis Hill. If you are just joining us, this is our grand finals between Gamers 2 on the blue side going up against SK Gaming Prime on the purple side. Yes, indeed. If you didn't know what was up for grabs, $1,000 to the winner, $500 to second place. And it's a best of three. It is. That's a quite a nice prize for a, an online is. event. Yes, certainly. Certainly, certainly is, is what I was trying to say there. So nice you forgot how to talk. I know. As a <laughs> caster, it's kind of a prerequisite, I was going to gonna say, it's a good job that's not your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that was the uh, the final derp that I make in this, uh, this it, final game. If it's anything like earlier, it likely won't be from the both of us. <laughs> it has a certain kind of charm to it, though. What, in the way that people pity you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I want is pity. Not hatred, just pity. Well, what I want is a great game. And a great too. series of games. Now, here's something interesting. Renekton has backed 
to the base and is heading towards the bottom lane. Mm. And this is something we brought up in Champion Select, is we've seen SK not uh, be afraid to lane swap. Yes. They picked Trundle into Renekton, which does do kind of well uh, as the game goes further and further. So they want to avoid that matchup. They want to put the pressure onto Trundle and make sure that Trundle is as far behind as possible. Renekton does okay in a 2v1. He tends not to die too much as long as you play fairly passively and uh, gets through the early game fairly well. So they're going to apply that pressure onto Trundle and try and get an advantage that way. Alrighty. Well, let's see if it turns out to pay off for them. Plus the fact, the fact that they have a Wukong jungle, he's pretty good at ganking two members. Mm. So you can get in a situation where in a two versus two, if they catch them off guard, potentially double kill. And you know when you use that decoy, it kind of looks like 3v2. It so does. you get that intim intimidation factor. Psychologically, you've already won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, another relic shield actually start for Leon. Uh, the other interesting thing is Leona isn't as effective in a 2v1 situation True. as she is in a 2v2. Yes. Because uh, typically the lane is fairly shoved in a 2v1. Leona doesn't do too well diving turrets in the very early game. Uh, so it's just a case of she's going to be able to zone, but once Siv Yuki starts pushing the wave up, then it kind of becomes a little bit more difficult for Leona to actually do her job as well. Yeah, plus the fact Leona is a playmaking support. Mm. You want to get in there, you want to make plays, you want to try and set up kills for AD carry. And also, is this a small thing? Annie has range, Luna does not. So mm. Annie's going to be able to put down her ass on the tower. Leona's going to have to get very up close and personal. And they're going to push through even faster as well. Sivir will clear the waves very, very quickly, get to the tower, and then look to uh, do damage to the tower. We're seeing pretty much identical jungle paths out of our junglers, which is something that we've seen a lot this weekend. There's also been heavy, heavy focus on mid lane, but in a 2v1 situation, it looks like both jungles are going to take the defensive stance and go and join their solo laners. Mm-hmm. Well, JML takes a bit of punishment there from Six, but they're constantly just harassing this tower right now. And Six's job seems to just be throughout the uh, disintegrates and just kind of harass Trundle. Yeah, now both junglers have joined their solo lanes. With this is going to kick off. A trophy lands down there, flashing as well from Warden, I believe that was. In fact, it wasn't. He safeguarded onto a ward. Now Six is very, very low. Ignite comes down onto Trundle. Six is going to die for the first blood. And it goes to Gamers 2. He eats a boomerang blade for his troubles, but there's no way Sivir can jump on this. And that's one of the strengths of Lee Sin in that situation, is Lee Sin in a 2v2 fight is actually very, very strong. Has a lot of kill potential, because of uh, his damage, his mobility, his ability to gap close as well, where the, whereas Wukong doesn't quite have that synergy. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. That Trundle Lee Sin synergy, the pillar for the slow, then the Sonic Wave, the catch up, it just all really builds up really nicely. And that kill is going to be a good start for gamers too. Yeah. And uh, I did correct myself before saying it wasn't a flash, but I just want to make sure. Uh, it's it's known. He didn't use flash, he safeguarded right. so we could get close to the AD carry and six as well. So he still has flash to make big plays if he so chooses. And plus it's something that we said in the uh, the previous game as well that we were casting um, when Vi was being locked in versus Lee Sin mm -hmm. is that you have to expend a lot of energy, you have to expend a lot of mana and abilities to try and pick up a kill with Wukong pre-level 6. Yeah. Whereas Lee Sin can do it from level 2, and that's exactly what we just saw. Yeah, and again, that's just those strengths playing off. And uh, you can see SK shoving pretty hard into the top lane. They've got to be careful that those ganks don't continue to happen, but Mozilla lands a stun. And the Ignite has been popped instantly, jumping back on with the Zenith Blade. Ignite has been traded between uh, the support and the bottom laner there. And either way, no one has four. They traded pr damage pretty effectively there. Um, Mozilla took most of the brunt of SK, so actually that's going to be okay because they can pressure onto the turret now. Uh, and here comes another gang. Deja vu for me. It's exactly the same way it went down last time. Six is going to end up falling this time to Jay Wow, however. And it's just pretty much an identical gang. This is, uh, yeah, identical, as you said. But gamers, too, are exploiting the fact that SK have lane swapped and are pushing into a trundle lane. Because a trundle lane with that pillar is going to land the slow. The kill potential from Lee Sin is amplified. They haven't been able to replicate it in the bottom lane as much as they've tried. Yeah, it's the, the tro uh, trophy goes down. I said trolley. Mixing <laughs> between troll and trophy. Nice. Trolley, the trophy goes down. Let <laughs> me said it again. Nice one. <laughs> slurring words like a beast. And then the frozen domain afterwards is what I was going to say. So you can quickly close the gap that way. Yeah, and it just allows Lee Sin to pick up the kills. He's actually doing an aggressive job of uh, counter-jungling as well. So trying to keep more uh, Ku. I wanted to 
keep saying Perry as well. They, Ku, of course, substituting in for yeah. SK. He's trying to keep Ku as far behind as possible, but Ku's had to spend a lot of time down in this bottom lane. He has and not able to really counter gank top and surprise, surprise, look who's come knocking at the top lane. It's more than once again on Lee Sin. Remember that Six's flash is still down. Vandalins is still up, however, but there's the trophy. Carbon copy, third time in a row. Have mixed focus this time around. They're going to be trying to burn that flash, and here comes the Q combination. And also, the barrier has been popped off. How deep does Morden want to go? The answer is no further, and he will back on away. But they got both summoners away from Civic. Yeah, and th that's enough. That's as much as they needed. And it's actually bought a lot of time, coincidentally, across the other side of the map. Ku is coming down now, and there is no turret here for SK, though. Sayud gets the shield of Daybreak, but eats a lot of damage as well in return. Yuki is putting now enough damage to actually turn them away. Yeah, the thing about this whole situation is with Morden ganking top so much, it's had this very strange effect where it's delayed the tower pushing out of Zvanillan and Six for long enough that the Leona lane has actually taken the turret first. Of course, remember, we are on playing on live, uh, which does mean the 4.2 changes are still in effect with the fact that the upper towers do have more resistances anyway, so that bottom lane tower is uh, likely to fall faster, but They've been exploiting the greediness out of X SK to keep pushing in that top lane very, very well, and it's allowed them to have the tower advantage. Yeah, so. First blood did go down to Lee Sin. Second went to JWoww's Trundle. So pretty, pretty nice stuff here. And also remember that SK were the, the members that uh, actually instigated this 1v2 lane switch up. And yeah. so far it's been backfiring horribly. Yeah, we're actually in another pause, so hopefully this won't be quite as long as the last one. This uh, hopefully is just a small little blip, but we will find out. Ocelot has left the game, so hopefully he will be back in just a second. Mm -hmm. But uh, at this point in the game, Gamers 2 are doing a very good job of keeping on top of this lane swap out of SK, because SK are, uh, you know, they they wanted to avoid the matchup and put the the, uh, as, as much emphasis on Trundle as much as possible, but looking at things right now, Trundle is 1-0 and zero with 1 assist, mm -hmm. 35 CS as well, uh, to the 21 CS and 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero Renekton. So they're in a situation where it has backfired, as you said. Yeah, I mean, to coin uh, a bad movie, Judge Dredd, it's a double whammy, because it's not just the fact that they've died twice at top lane, it's also that they lost their bot lane as well. So in both circumstances, they fell behind. Yeah. As JWoww just left as well, so it's not looking too good. Yeah, I can't remember whether Gamers 2 have actually all moved into their house. I saw it was talked about the other day when they did the Gamers 2 announcement. Unfortunately, didn't get to see the entire announcement myself. Mm -hmm. But they may be at the same place, which might explain the double disconnect. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully it won't last too long. At least this one's on the other side now. So, you know, we're, we're going to have DCs on both sides of the game. But... I'm pretty impressed by Gamers 2. They've weathered the storm of that 2v1 situation where you're expecting Trundle to get put fairly far behind and have come out ahead. Mm. Yeah, very much the case. So Gamers 2 have just been uh, playing their socks off so far. And yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if that continues. Uh, but regardless, as you can see, still on the poor screen, uh, we have no idea what's going on. Two of the players have DC, JWoww and Ocelot. So fingers crossed they'll be back soon. And I'm also, sure they'll be back. just to cover my back, the Judge Red I was talking about was the Sylvester Stallone one, not the new one. The well, new one was awesome. The Sylvester Stallone one did have Anthrax, the band, doing the theme song. Which did it? Yeah, it made it better. I Am The Law, the song off um, their, their album. I can, why can I not remember the album? It's it one of my favorite albums as well. It was a bad movie, though. Good song. Uh, JWoww <laughs> has reconnected, so hopefully that you know is b bodes well for uh, us getting back into the game very shortly. Ocelot still needing to reconnect, but hopefully that'll be a, a matter of time. He, apparently he re reconnected just before JWoww, so we should be getting underway very shortly. And uh, one thing I really want to mention is just, uh, <laughs> he's left again, there we go. Uh, JWoww has been playing very well this tournament, very well. And it's something that people regard him as uh, one of the best top laners in Challenger, especially. Uh, some people even put him you know, above some of the EU LCS top laners, so. It's interesting to see how well he's doing on a plethora of champions as well. And I've seen him play with a plethora of teams, and he's, mm. he's normally been their star player. I'm thinking of TCM, for example, yeah. uh, where he often had to carry everyone on his back and just go forward with Jax or you know, Kha'Zix, like we were saying previously. Those were his very famous champions. Also, has reconnected again, so uh, fingers crossed 
will be good to go. But regardless, I think he may even be in with a shout of MVP of this tournament. Perhaps. He has done a very good job. And even in the games where they've looked uh, a little far behind, he's been the one that's really brought them back into it. Yeah, like the Jacks game, for example. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it's, he's not even on his, uh, his comfortable champions. We said Jax Kazix are his comfortable champions. We're going to see how he continues to play on Trundle as we head back into the game. Yep, just to see Ocelot giving a few auto attacks to Exiles Gragas, who does have the blue buff. So, other than all the, uh, the action at top lane, it's been really a story of this switch around, which, as again, we said before, has definitely went against SK Gaming. They're trying their best to get rid of JWoW and this tower afterwards, and they may very well try and rotate their double lane, uh, dual lane, I should say, back to bot afterwards. Yeah, I would expect them to do that. They've finally taken down that turret, mainly because the pressure has been alleviated from Morden. But what Gamers 2 do have is Morden on that Dragon area, and they've taken the turret in the top lane, and they know that they've sacrificed Dragon control for this, so they're going to push top lane while Gamers 2 take Dragon. It's a question is, I don't think that they can get enough done in this top lane to really even this out. The thing is, though, that Dragon respawns, top tower won't. Yeah. So it's always a case of these are objectives that are going to stay dead. And Dragon will be up again soon. So they, they did manage to push top quite a bit. Now Ku is coming around from the side. JWoww is actually going to get aggressed on from six. There is the Tibbers instant subjugate, though, from JWoww. is not going to be enough. And six actually picks up the kill, I believe, that was with Ignite at the end. Yeah, they're going to push this tower low on health. They don't have the minions to actually push it down yet. New Wave will join it, so that should fall. So overall, two towers. That's going to be both ultimates in mid being used. Ocelot just popping that wild growth to try and keep himself alive. Barrel will come through, flashing on in, does Ooh. get the kill. And the blue buff transfer as well. Now a bot lane, Mozilla caught with his pants down. He's going to be aggressed on from both Yuki and Dayun. He's forced to... Use that. Ooh. Oh, Domin is so close to falling. Very close, but they're going to now focus down this inner tower. If they can equal, equal that out, it will go a long way to uh, keeping their lead here. It's a thousand gold right now, but they did just lose two towers in a row, and there's heavy pressure going in towards the middle lane as well. So, SK Gaming Prime, not ones to sit back while behind either. Same with gamers uh, too. They seem to be both... Two teams that like to push the envelope, that they like yeah. to control and dictate the pace of the game. So I, I think it's going to be a, more of a power struggle this game than anything else, and just seeing which one you know breaks the other one's defenses first. And that'll be interesting to see, because I, I kind of feel like that'll be similar to game one between TFS or uh, TNP, as uh, they are now known, and uh, Gamers 2, where it really was back and forth through some of the mid-game. Mm -hmm. Yep, but as we said before, Gamers 2... Uh, they have shown over the last week or so that they're an incredibly tenacious bunch of players. Yeah. Down, but never out. Yeah, they were down against My Insanity in yep. the Riot Challenger League. Down against um, TNP. Against TNP. Yep. Gotta keep remembering TNP. It is difficult, because TFS, TNP, they sound kind of similar in a way. They do. If it didn't have T as the first letter <laughs> of the acronym, it'd be fine. Yep. Also, if they didn't keep TFS in their team names, that would That would also be quite nice, yeah. <laughs> and, and they also had uh, Yarrow in as well, which made me want to keep saying uh, Steve Bakes Cookies. Yeah. Made me keep saying want to want to say Dignitas UK, but there we go. <laughs> that's well, that's, I remember him uh, also being in British Tea Time. I start so. a competition of who can go back further, Vince. Well, <laughs> I think I just won if it was. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> but we're back in the grand finals here. Gamers 2 against SK Gaming Prime 6 is on the hunt here, which... Uh, isn't actually on the hunt because that's Civ. I was going to say but what? <laughs> Civ is support. It's a figure of speech. I know. I know. I'm just <laughs> messing with you. And he is, to be fair, he is on the prowl to try and get some kills there as Annie. I mean, that's that's pretty much in a nutshell what Annie's designed to do as support is yeah. to lock players down with a Tibber stop. Flash not available though for now. So it, it's one of those engaged calls that as we head towards these mid-game team fights, that really is where Annie comes into her own. Is that engage out of nowhere, mm -hmm. where you know you pop the coin, you pop the flash, get the, the Tibbers stun and follow up. Not quite there with the flash down though, but you never know. We'll uh, we'll see how that turns out. Well, speaking of flash down, Mozilla has none, and there is a hungry jungler up there in the form of Morden. He would like to sink his fangs into the crocodile, but so far he's uh, he's playing the patience game, and this is giving Wukong a chance to come up to top. So what would have been a two versus one 
while K's gone for double dot golems instead. But if he waits for too much longer and Wukong does manage to get up here stress, they may have missed their opportunity. The thing is, JWoww wants Mozilla to, to start trading with him first. Uh, you use Subjugate typically under half health because you get... Uh, it, it's kind of a surprise. Once you're under half health, you steal their resistances and start dealing damage back out. Here comes a Cyclone and Morden as well. JWoww is taking so much damage though. They're turning this one back around. Morden has slain Ku though and now looking at the kill. On to Mozilla, but Mozilla is chasing him down. The tower is no longer up. Uh, explosive cask was used from Exile in mid just to push Ocelot away. They're still chasing after an excellent oh. top and global presence across here and deaths as well. As that is going to be Vanillin falling down to the hands of Yuki's Lucian. I think Vanillin disconnected or just misclicked because he kind of ran in and took all the damage and didn't even stop to attack minions. It must have been that he had DC'd and like came back because he popped his barrier. Right, okay, so, so he was there. That's kind of strange. Uh, but nevertheless, up in that top lane, you saw the engagement, but there's another in bottom lane here, Flash forced out. Yeah, Diode flashing through the wall just to keep himself alive. And uh, that is gonna have to force him to back away, even though the blue buff is up. I don't think they only want to challenge this one. So in the beginning of that gank up in the top lane, uh, typically in a 1v1, you want to trade uh, as much as possible on Trundle. You get down below half health and get your opponent below half health as well, then wait and pop Subjugate uh, pretty late on into the fight so you then get the additional uh, health and you, the additional uh, resistance shred from that. And then you start trading back up, you get the lifesteal back, and you end up pretty well off and your opponent kind of ends up dying. But in that situation... Uh, Mozilla just wasn't biting. <laughs> he, you know, he, he had cast his line out, but n nothing was uh, nothing was biting. He so didn't, he didn't fancy a nibble. No, he, he didn't, and uh, that meant that Morden was spending a lot of time up there. They did pick up the kill uh, onto Ku, I believe it was, in that engagement. So they got something from it, but couldn't really follow it up with a kill onto Renekton. Yeah, uh, it's very disciplined play though from Mozilla as well. Uh, Realizing I have no reason to just throw out random auto attacks mm. i'd rather just get the farm and in doing so strangely enough kept himself alive for a, a bit longer and uh, as i said while the play by play was going on there was global action like yeah. every lane was laying into each other i'm kind of interested to see where this build is coming from jwow because typically on trundle you build blade of the rune king with sunfire king and those are your two tools. You stand there, you deal a lot of damage, you take a lot of damage, then you kind of subjugate and heal back up. This is a big dragon fight, though. Dragon taken from Lee Sin, Cyclone coming on in, and the oh. blue wall growth, beautiful explosive cast, though, knocking everybody back from the opposition. Ocelot now with that, Shinny just picked up, is doing work. Double kill, though, from Yuki, looking for his triple. He does indeed get the triple kill. Now turning back around, going for the quadra, but he's been a bit too aggressive here, and he could pay for it dearly with his life. Flash away from Exile. Here comes the trophy as well from Trundle, and it doesn't look as though Yuki is going to get the quadra after all, unless last they can manage to pick up the kill here on Mozilla. Ocelot slowed him down. There we go. Glidlance finishes the kill and seals the deal. Beautiful play, though, from Lucian again. Really nice set of kills picked up there. And Yuki once again showing us his Lucian skills. Uh, yesterday, he picked up a, a pentakill on uh, on Lucian. And, oh, no, it wasn't. It was uh, Hyanan. Hyanan that yeah. picked up the pentakill. But Yuki's been looking pretty strong on uh, Lucian all weekend. and But th that was really good stacking of the teamfight presence there from SK Gaming Prime. They had the Cyclone into the explosive cask and dealt so much damage that that combination in that way later into the game is going to decimate the team of gamers too. Mm, yep. And the fact that... They've got 4-0 Lucian with Bloodthirster, and I would imagine that he's going to recall now and probably pick up Phage. Okay, there we go. Just on the money there. <laughs> I actually said it as it came up, so I think... You've still got Jat's Crystal Ball. Oh, I think I, I reacted too quick. I think I may have cheated there in my own mind. Mm, I'm not sure. We'll see. To be honest, it was pretty obvious he go for Phage, because after, uh, after Bloodthirster, pretty much 99% of Lucians are going to go try force, and yeah. they're going to start with Phage or, or Zeal. We have seen the slight shift ever so recently to the Blade of the Ruined King Trinity Force, <laughs> Lucian, which, uh, you know, typically has been done against uh, champions like Dr. Mundo to get that extra uh, percentage health uh, damage. But in this case, the very standard Bloodthirster Triforce build, I think, is the best build to go along in this situation. Yeah, definitely. I, I would always 
go with Bloodthirst Triforce personally, but of course it's personal choice. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's not wrong or right to pick a Blade of Rune King. One really interesting thing we've seen this weekend is a departure of junglers from building a uh, an offensive, a uh, defensive item second. So many junglers this weekend have gone Elder Lizard into Brutalizer. And it's a change that we've started to see ever since some of the recent patches. And uh, we're seeing it again here with uh, Wukong, of course, Black Cleaver works so well in his kit. But even seeing it on Lee Sin here, a Brutalizer, uh, gives them a surprising amount of damage in the early game. And I'm kind of uh, interested to see how that works out as we go later into the game because... I mean, it's fairly common knowledge that Lee Sin, when you get later into the game, uh, kind of almost becomes just the initiation tool and doesn't really have much more to offer other than that, apart from tanking some damage here and there. So I wonder how this damage affects it. Yeah, uh, towards the mid to late game, it just becomes utility-based. Yeah. The idea is to, to single someone out, and we said before with the insect mechanics, uh, which of course Morton's going to be able to do, players at this level can, you know. The other thing I'm wondering is, we saw earlier uh, TNP actually, when they were running Lee Sin jungle, is that Lee Sin's actually going to go aggressive yeah, here. Speaking of him, he's on a Dragon's Rage, Mozilla back, who slice and dices through. There's the Ignite, that is going to be all she wrote. And JWoww picks up the kill. Really nice pillar there. Yep. No no Good. escape on that one for Renekton. And uh, as I was going to say, uh, when we saw Lee Sin jungle earlier, with, of course, Lee Sin jungle tends to build a site stone, uh, TNP actually swapped out all of their trinkets and went five sweeper trinkets and then ended up swapping it at the late game for one blue trinket on top of that. So I wonder whether we'll see that out of gamers too because they've got a lot of ward presence on the map right now and it would be uh, another good way of clearing out the ward presence from uh, SK Prime if they picked up more sweepers. Well, uh, that is definitely a possibility here, especially considering that gamers 2 are quite a distance ahead for 19 minutes in the game, about 6k. And they've also got, by and large, dominance over the Dragon area as well. So at stages like this, they've just got to keep rinsing and repeating because they are getting further and further ahead. Trundle's just going to get stronger. Bit of a desperation engage, perhaps, here from, I think he said Cloud9, but of course, it's SK Gaming Prime. Ku goes right into the front, and he ends up dying, but now Mozilla coming around the corner. As Renekton shuts down the Lucian, so no AD carry. That's going to be a lot of damage eliminated. So Valiant trying his best to actually turn this one back around, but I'm not too sure if he's going to be able to make this work. The uh, barrel roll comes in. Ocelot is now isolated from the rest of the pack, and there's the long-range boomerang blade. Nicely done. A big selfless shield from Ocelot kept JWoww alive in that engage, and that all stemmed, uh, from SK's perspective, from the fact they didn't actually have Tibbers available to begin that fight. So if they'd have had that, that would have actually been a, a pretty big tool that uh, would have been there. It was already had been used at the blue area, so SK actually doing pretty well there, considering their engage tool wasn't available. Overall, they get the turret down there and get themselves some gold. We'll see where they head from there with regards to itemization. You can see Ocelot has picked up the Lich Bane alongside the Athenes and Holy Grail. So that's really the start point now that Lulu's going to deal significant damage. Yeah, Lich Bane is a massive item for Lulu. And uh, he's going to be looking to chunk through pretty much everybody on the side of SK Gaming Prime. Q has uh, gone for the Brutalizer as well. So you were sort of speaking before about Brutalizers on jungle. Seems to be going in the same di uh, area. And now it's also gone for the Ruby Crystal. Yeah, so uh, Brutalizer onto a Wukong typically means... An pretty much definitely means that uh, it's going to be a Black Cleaver. Yeah. Uh, the Ruby Crystal's actually surprising. I wonder whether he's going to go Black Cleaver this early into the game. I would be surprised to see that, as typically uh, it's more of a later game upgrade for when people have the armor to really defend. When you look at the side of Gamers 2, only real armor is that Sunfire Cape for now and uh, a set of Ninja Tabi. Looks like there's going to be another fight here over Dragon, but the pillar will deny SK for a little bit. That's a really good pillar. And also the Solar Flare afterwards. That's bought at least in enough time. Warden will be getting that Dragon. Now will be going on to SK Gaming Prime. They are definitely just stacking up. And Exile gets kicked from Lee Sin back to safety, as the case may be here. But Six has gone down. Now Severe trying to turn this one back around. JWoww battling out with the decoy while uh, Ku does get himself back to safety. Actually, he's going to be going for the dive here, Yuki. He's gone past his own tower. I say dive, actually, but it was his own tower, so... Yeah. yeah. I guess Gragas went for the dive. Yeah, Gragas was looking to execute there, but it wasn't in time as uh, Ku now looking to get aggressive. Can't really find the position, but uh, Gamers 2 have done a good job here of uh, starting to focus on objectives after this as they... Uh, Going to look towards the middle tower. Also pushed up bottom fairly heavily as well. j has got a fair amount of attack speed. 
Uh, but they don't really feel confident with Mozilla there. He'll clear the wave out and then it's down to tower aggro. But I think that's a smart play from gamers too. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. There's no need to go super aggressive and give away a lot of the kills that you just managed to pick on up there. A uh, couple of players are going to be recalling. Wow has, well, Blade of the Rune King Sunfire Cape, so it's going to be quite interesting to see what that Ruby Crystal turns into. Yeah, let's... Uh, we, we'll figure that out. I wonder whether it'll be a Spirit Visage. Uh, yeah, okay, Looks there's a, a Negatron Cloak, so it's yeah. going towards the Spirit Visage, uh, which, you know, a good item is going to help him protect against Gragas. Um, so yeah, yeah, good. Could it could also be a Banshee as well, I guess. I, I think I'd expect Spirit Visage. Um, because, of course, mm. you get uh, extra health. We saw on Jax he built Banshee's Veil. I wonder, is this one of those things? We'll we'll have to see. It's a very versatile uh, decision to make. Mm -hmm. uh, by extra health, I mean health regen. Yeah. From uh, from the Spirit Visage, and also it's going to do nice work against Gragas on top of that. Giant's Belt has also been finished off on Lee Sin, so now going for more of that tanky utility Lee Sin that we were talking about previously, because the early game has finished. The ganking phase has definitely finished, and therefore Lee Sin, there's no point going any more AD, really. Yeah, at, th at this point he needs to build tank, otherwise he will just kind of fall over to uh, any kind of Gragas damage, so it's something that's necessary to you to I'm going to play with fire a little bit and clear out a ward butt with JWoww just close enough. Svanillan not really going to try and contest that. Svanillan doesn't want to uh, start taking on a trundle at this point in the game. That would be pretty detrimental to his health. That would be suicidal. Uh, pretty sure that would be suicidal from him. He's, he's played very well in this tournament though. Yeah. You know, to, be, to be fair to him. And he does have uh, some pretty big items. Building towards Last Whisper next has the components of pickaxe and longsword. So from there. Shouldn't be too far away from the last whisper. 1,065 gold, I believe, is to finish that one off from the components he has. I'm doing maths on stream. There's an explosive cask in the middle lane. Didn't really land, but that is a turret down in the bottom lane. And uh, One thing to note, actually, as good as Vanillan is doing, uh, Yuki is actually looking very impressive once again. Six and one, three assists, and 210 CS. And I mean, I'm very impressed with Yuki. We've seen him play time and time again now with Gamers 2, but really this weekend he's started coming into his own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Yuki just firing through the colleague. Q has landed there onto uh, the Civet, who is now blocking behind the tower, which has just been destroyed. So I need to be a bit careful, but it seems like the tower was more than enough for Gamers 2. And again, very smartly, they just back on away. They don't want to force fights. The Black Cleaver has been completed. Morden finds Mozilla in the jungle. This could actually kick off a fight. Yes, it will. Mozilla is taking a ton of damage here. There we go. Ku jumps in with the Cyclone. Lands on pretty much every single player, but Lucian has picked up the double kill. He is chasing after six, and Exile wants that triple once again. And he will be stunned out. In fact, Ocelot comes in and takes the third kill here. And that's the price you pay if you go into the jungle against a team that's ahead of you. And that's the price you pay for finishing Black Cleaver before building defensive items. Mm. I wish that fight had taken five more seconds so I could have finished finished my sentence saying that Black Cleaver this early is typically not a good buy because you'll go into team fights with Cyclone and you're in the middle of everybody on the opposition team. So once that knock-up animation has completed, you're incredibly vulnerable with two offensive items. And he's not stopping on the offense. He's got another longsword. This could be very detrimental because if he dies very early on, sure, he's got the, uh, the damage down from the Cyclone, but... It's a member not there to defend any kind of objective push. Mm -hmm. All right. So do, do you think it's a case that he should have gone for building towards a Randuins or something instead? I mean, I, I'm not the challenger level player, so I, I will say that. It's just this is an observation on how this game is going. That He's dying pretty quickly in these fights. So yeah. at, at some point, you need to start building something defensive, mm. is, is what I'm saying. You can see that uh, Morden has gone uh, for two offensive items and then very quickly is going to that Randuin's Omen to keep himself alive. Yeah. Because he knows he's more valuable on his team alive than landing some damage and then dying. Right, yeah. I, I actually agree with what you're saying, though, about the fact that, you know, going to attack items are all well and good if you can get the, the follow-up damage as well. But Ku is going in with Cyclone, and then he's popping within a heartbeat. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess my point is that you're getting the extra um, armor reduction from Black Cleaver on the Cyclone, which is great. It synergizes well with Wukong. 
but the amount of armor you're reducing on the opposition team to me doesn't feel significant enough for the Black Cleaver upgrade from Brutalizer. I, I don't feel they've got enough armor that they desperately need the Black Cleaver right now. They need more people in the fights. Right. Okay. Well, the fight is coming to Ocelot right now on top lane. JWoww is there in the support of his mid laner, but Ku is taking so much damage. So Flat finishes that one off and Mac from max range, and now Mozilla is being chased down. Zedith Blade not quite connecting, culling from the side will be forcing Vanillan away from the rest of his team. But still, one for zero, looking hungry for this tower. And they're going to push this down. They they know they've got the numbers advantage here, and Diude is pretty tanky, as is JWoww. Six is going to get caught. He is. Loads of damage on Six. He will finally fall from Lucian, who moves nine and one in this game. Tower will be falling afterwards. And again, I've got to say that Yuki's positioning and his... Just raw damage output is insane across this tournament. I feel like we've only seen him make one major mistake. There's the... Wow, the pillar. I, there's another kill. Yeah, Exile's taking a lot as well from Ocelot. Narrowly escaping due back to, uh, in part, to the Ruthless Predator that Renekton threw out there on Yuki. Stopped the onslaught from him. But that's going to be the inhibitor falling regardless. They may actually turn around and pinging the mid one now. Yeah, that might be a little risky here. They, they do have to play smart. They haven't got minions there. They've got to be careful and back away. I don't think face tanking this with uh, the members of SK coming up would be the smartest idea. As uh, Exile's explosive cask is still available. Yes, it is. Barrel comes through, just catches on the edge of Morden. Subjugate was used from JMAO as well. You can see him just absorbing resistances and some stats on top of that. But uh, it is going to keep them away. Doing a bit of damage. Culling actually finishes off Annie. That's going to be the explosive cask. And Leona picks up another kill in this game. Cyclone and Mozilla oh. are now chasing after Yuki, who turns it back around, gets another double kill. Moves on for 11 and 1. Lee Sin finishes off Renekton. And it's looking likely that this first game is going to go to Gamers 2. Nobody can survive the damage that Yuki is putting out. And SK Gaming Prime have realized this. They're going to head to game number two. And again, Yuki finishing the game 11 and 1 is looking absolutely on form here. Yes, he is. And I said before, JWoww might be in the, the shout for an MVP award, but Yuki's right up there. Every single game, as you said, I think we've seen him make one mistake, and that was against uh, TNP when he flashed on the, the uh, tower top lane and ended yeah. up dying. But that was a convincing performance from gamers too. SK tried the lane swap. It didn't work. Morden and, and JWoww just had too much in the way of synergy in that lane and really just punished SK Gaming for making somewhat of a risky lane swap. Yeah, not only did it not work, but it put them quite a long way behind. Yeah. They lost the tower first. Six died twice from Morden's ganks. One of the kills went to him. One of them went to JWoww. So the idea behind it was, let's really cripple JWoww's trundle. Yeah. But in doing so, you gave him an assist and a kill and by and large free farm. Yeah, it was uh, quite a big lead that Gamers 2 picked up there. But we're going to head to game number two very shortly, guys. This is our grand finals here for the Face It's Challenger Invitational number two. We'll be back with Gamers 2 versus SK Gaming Prime game number two in just a couple of minutes.